Hello, here is Bibi Walker. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will discuss some interesting topic. I think we will talk about connection between the keyboard instrument and the PC, and probably even if you are already connected your PC to a keyboard, it's worth to show this video because I will show you three possible scenarios uh, in which you can use actually uh, keyboard and PC connectivity. So let's go forward. All right, so the first thing, actually let's try to answer the question why people actually are connecting keyboard to PC. I'm talking about keyboard instrument, keyboard uh, which probably has a speakers and built-in sound engine and so on. I'm not talking about MIDI keyboard, which is pure MIDI controller. Of course, we will also discuss this kind of, you know, uh, scenario, but uh, let's try uh, to go through uh, what I have done prepared. So basically, um, if you are creating using using computer and you want to play some parts on a piano keyboard, you can of course use uh, such a small MIDI keyboard like this, okay? But it has some few disadvantages. First of all, such a keyboard is of course portable, you could put it in the backpack and go somewhere, but it doesn't have a full size uh, keys first, then it doesn't have so much keys, so much octaves, so 66 is a quite big, uh, you know, to play some advanced chord, uh, extended chords and so on, so you have available a big scale of keys from low C to high C6, 5 and so on. Of course, you have this button octave up, octave down, but if you are an experienced piano player, you want to have all these keys available now. So, people are familiar with their instrument and then they don't want to use the external MIDI keyboard, they just want to take the instrument that they have known, that they have play for years and connect to computer to produce some music on computer using those keyboard which they want. Okay, so it was the, the first reason. The, the reason when we want to have our favorite keyboard connect to computer and produce music on computer. The second one is to use the sound engine from keyboard instead of using software synth. Basically, if you have a keyboard which have sound engine. We will discuss this in a moment, but uh, the, the keyboards itself that uh, are, you know, equipped with all-in-one package, I mean, they are controllers, so they have keys, they have speakers, so they produce sound and they have inside the synth engine on Rompler, so they can play samples or generate sound in, you know, mathematical wave using, you know, wave function, a triangle, uh, sinusoid and so on, so so they modulate, they have LFO, so low, low frequency oscillators and so on and so on. There's a bunch of theory that allows you uh, the electrical system, the electronics to produce sounds, bass and, and more lead sound, whatever you have. So uh, if we have such keyboard and depending on the quality, the price, some of them are very expensive and produce really fine quality and, you know, unique sound. And if you want to use them, uh, instead of using emulation VST plugins, we could take such a, you know, old school vintage synth or old school vintage uh, keyboard connect to computer and grab those samples. So we could actually use it to render sound. So we only send data from computer to that keyboard and we take this you know, sound back to our DLW software. Okay, so it is the second reason. The third reason is, uh, basically, if you watch my video, you know that I'm showing how you could make arrangement on a keyboard, Yamaha keyboard or any other keyboard. The producers are trying to make, the, make this interface more friendly, but let's be honest, using the mouse computer, using the computer actually, the user, graphical user interface, the mouse, the computer keyboard is the most efficient way if you want to copy some patterns, click some stuff, tweak some sound. There is no such a great 
you know, I have watched a lot of videos, a lot of instrument, arranger instrument, which are, you know, designed to produce all the performance on the instrument, the physical instrument. And the, the best of the best is the DLW software when you have the years of, you know, experience the, the the programmers the designers of such software have a lot of experience to produce the unique and very efficiency graphical interface to you know work with arrangement so not only recording but also making some adjustment copying patterns mixing grouping tracks and so on and so on so if you want to produce music in a studio way uh, we use computers and this is basically the DLW software is the class of software that are the best for it and we actually want to connect our keyboard to have, you know, sound uh, to be instead of making arrangement on a compute on a physical keyboard, we want to use a computer. So this is the third reason when we want to take our, you know, physical keyboard, connect to computer, do some work faster, more efficient, and then go back to render final arrangement. Okay, the fourth uh, reason why we probably want to, you know, connect uh, our keyboard to computer is to grab samples, loops, and patterns from the hardware keyboard to the LW. It basically may be similar to the reason number two, but this is not the same. In the reason number two, we are making the keyboard to produce sound in real time. And in the fourth reason, which is here, I'm talking about taking samples from the keyboard and, you know, make a copy, a duplicate in DLW and then working offline. Offline, I mean without the, um, the keyboard. So uh, the situation, you borrow a very nice, I don't know, Jupiter 8 from someone who could lend you it for two weeks or <laughs> two days and you want to record some samples, prepare something nice stuff and you're taking it and copying those nice patterns, those nice samples and then use it in your DAW software instead of using the scenario number two when you are m using it all the time to produce samples. So you're actually only grabbing something like drum patterns, for example. I'm, I am, I'm looking for, a, in my work, I actually do a lot of things and uh, the cases when I'm taking, for example, the drum patterns from the styles, only pure drums without, you know, the accompaniment, bass line and so on, but I'm only taking drum patterns because it saves me a lot of work in DLW to make some fill up, fill downs, every break, fill in and so on. It's so great if you have this drum pattern. So in some scenarios, uh, we could grab those drum patterns, loops and so on. And the last fifth uh, reason why we probably want to connect computer to, um, to PC, uh, sorry, keyboard to PC or Mac is to record whole performance in DAF and edit them make some final mix and so on. Because most advanced, advanced uh, keyboards have the ability to make some mix even. You can uh, I'll record another track with vocals and then make some adjustments, tweaking sound. But it never be such efficient with so many real-time or post-production effects like in uh, professional DAW. So basically we want to make our mix here on computer and most of the people do it in a, in like this. So, so they use some instruments, external instruments, some of them are software instruments, and then they put together everything and make the final arrangement in the DLW, not the computer, uh, uh, not in the keyboard, but I'm not saying it's not possible. The keyboards that are sold as arranger or digital workstation, this was the same name, DLW workstation, digital audio workstation they have the same name, the hardware devices. So they are in design and intended to be uh, all in one device. So you probably don't need to use computer, but most of the people do it in this way. All right. Okay, computer and keyboard, what, why, and when? In this diagram, don't panic, please. 
um, I'm showing you the most um, every connectivity that we usually have. So let's discuss this. This side is the side when we have our computer. Computer, it could be PC or it could be Mac with some software called DLW software. You may be heard about Ableton, FL Studio, Cubase, Logic Pro and so on and so on. Uh, so we get a computer, we have a software. This computer has USB ports, we mostly use USB ports. We also have in some laptops or PC desktop computers the 3.5 jack input, but let's forget it, the quality of such input is horrible and for those we use an external audio interface, which is nothing more than a sound card with nicely uh, with high quality preamps and digital to audio and audio uh, analog to digital and digital to analog converters if you want to uh, you know take more knowledge about uh, what is the digital uh, analog to digital or digital to analog conversion sample rate bit rate uh, how it affects the latency and so on please check the description that there is more video about this topic but today I'm only mentioned that audio interface allows you to convert your uh, analog signal into digital form and vice versa so as you can see there is uh, arrow from left and right and basically we get operating system on this operating system we get some software uh, DLW software usually comes with VST plugins, which is nothing more like real-time effects, but also software synth, so the instrument that produce sound using the software. They do not uh, take sound from some external device, they use software to generate sound. Uh, for, an, uh, for example, Analog Lab 5, which I am presenting in my video where I taking the <laughs> digital piano kawaii which has nothing more only the uh, piano sample some strings and then i'm using it to generate and i'm using it as a keyboard and generate and this scenario we also discuss in a further uh, part of this video so basically we got software with some plugins uh, doesn't matter which software actually most of this software are very similar to each other depending what are your needs if you are more for live performance or more for uh, production, studio production. Uh, it's another topic and let's let's forget it for a moment. So be, we actually have a DLW software, we get audio interface and to this audio interface, we connect speakers, the professional speakers with, you know, flat response. So all frequencies actually are not, you know, equalized, they are equal, not, doing any special stuff they are called studio monitors which are very i mean they are crucial if you want to make a mix so to i don't want to discuss all the stuff but speakers or studio monitors something that allows you to hear the sound that comes out of your computer through the audio interface to the speakers to your ears then all right um and on the other side, we get our physical instrument, our keyboard, which also has speakers, which also has a synth engine inside, so it can produce sound independently, and it has some connectivity. What connectivity has the um, usual keyboard instrument? Well, it has a audio outputs, which are analog outputs, three point uh, quarter inch uh, mono jacks, in our stereo configuration phones output so they are analog output so they produce sound not and they give uh, the electrical system the waveform which look like this after sampling but they are uh, giving you the output which you can connect to amplifier to bigger speakers to mixer and do more but if you if we are talking about connection to computer we usually connect it to audio interface some of the keyboard instruments that are, are on the market are, you know, equipped with the audio interface inside. So you don't need to buy separate audio interface. You just plug the USB and it USB could have two, uh, you know, purposes. It could be used an audio, as audio interface and as the 
MIDI device, even with one socket. It's possible uh, because uh, everything is digital on USB cable, so you could put a lot of you know information, data, clocks, everything on this uh, interface. But not do not. I mean, you need to check if your keyboard has a built-in audio interface. For example, my Yamaha PSR975 doesn't have. I know that presented here Roland Phantom 6 or 7 or 8, it's basically the same instrument with another number of keys, has this built-in audio interface and some nice features with, you know, DLW integration. But uh, the usual, I mean, the most, let's call it standard way to grabbing audio data from the keyboard instrument is to use the analog output through audio interface which change those you know analog sound into waveform which look like this it's the amplitudes over the time and then using USB cable it sends you to your DLW software so you can have the waveform like in this and this is and also if you're using mic your voice every sound produced in analog way could be changed in this digital form which look like this and this is audio audio data tape recording wave files mp3 files all of them are audio and there is another connectivity called midi data which i'm referring on my channel a lot and midi data is only a uh, information a score of notes and effects i mean like, like sustain pedal in uh, or other control commands but they are only commands so one side for example software could say to instrument hey play f note now and he plays because he is a, a sound engine he could produce this f sound and play it through speakers and in the further part of the video we will discuss all the possible scenarios because as you can see, MIDI is bi-directional interface. So it could be used uh, from this side to this side or vice versa. The instrument could set, hey DLW, play this note or record or store this note when I'm playing this chords progression, I want to use it for my music. So I was looking for nice explanation uh, and things uh, what scenarios actually we can build without with our computer and keyboard and I decided there are three fundamental questions first is if we're talking about those two sides so the side of computer and the side of keyboard so the first question is who will play the sound and mean who is the sound generator who holds the samples who holds the uh, electronic uh, module for sound generation because this is crucial it's not obvious that always the keyboard generates sound the software could also generate sound so this is who is the sound engine who has the sound engine who will produce sound the second question is who will decide what to play and how fast which tempo which bpm and so on and this refers actually to midi data because both the uh, DLW could be a source of MIDI data. For example, I want to type them or import MIDI file and send to, to keyboard or vice versa. Co keyboard could send some MIDI data to DLW for further recording on sending in back. As I said, MIDI data is bidirectional. I'm um, on some of my videos, I'm talking about master and slave MIDI, which is the master tempo. Uh, and the MIDI actually is a lot of great stuff we can do with MIDI. You, you can connect loopers, synchronize tempo, uh, DLW software, hardware synth, and so on and so on. The MIDI is a standard, and in our scenarios that I will present you in a moment, there will be also MIDI from one side to another and vice versa. And the final third question is who will record the final performance? I mean, on which device, computer or keyboard, you will be storing your final performance. There is a video on my channel when I'm recording on DLW, there is a video when I'm recording on the keyboard, because keyboard has auxiliary input, so it could even take another mic and mix everything down into WAV files and produce 
will be done. The final stage will be done on a keyboard. It's possible, yes. Most people think that everything should be done on the LW, so you take an export file to WAV or MP3 and put on a video on YouTube or whatever. So basically, if we talk about live performance on studio production, and always at the final stage, we want to capture the sound to make the final file, final mix that is able, that we could you know share with friends and so on. So this is this final audio recording performance. And it doesn't matter if you use software instrument, hardware instrument, if you're using DAF as a MIDI data source or DAF as a MIDI data receiver, at the end of the day, we want to have the final performance. And the question who will record this performance is also crucial to discuss those three uh, scenarios that I will present you now. And yes, and before <laughs> we go, I prepared this explanation, uh, how to distinguish MIDI and sound engine. So I was looking for a nice, you know, analog, analogy, uh, uh, how to distinguish them and understand. And basically, if we take a look at the orchestra, the symphonic orchestra, we got the conductor, which is in here. And actually, he is the MIDI guy. Why? Because he has the score of all performance, this ouvertura, however it's called it. And he said, let's play now. Dun, dun, this tempo. Actually, this guy doesn't hold any instrument, so it plays nothing. It only, it, told, it only shows the other guys what to play, on which instrument, how loud, how fast, and so on, and so on. So basically, this guy is a MIDI data. <laughs> he produces MIDI data. He, of course, uh, he is a you know, sender the data to the sound engines. And what is the sound engine? It's the guy or a lady with the physical instrument, like strings, contrabass, violin, trumpets, drums, it's also an instrument. So um, the MIDI data guy, the conductor said, hey, play this note, and you, hey, play this note, and you stop playing this note, I will replace you. I want another guy in here, so, Sweep, he changed the instrument to something else, maybe a piano instead of strings, and so on. So I think this analogy could be useful to, you know, if you are, you know, making your setup and and, and thinking about which solution will be best for me now. Uh, okay, I could be here. So the guy, sound engine. All right, so let's go forward. Uh, let's go forward. Maybe I will change myself here. Okay, scenario first. Scenario first, let's go because the time is short. Keyboard instrument works as MIDI keyboard. Uh, what this actually means? I have shown you some MIDI keyboard. This is MIDI keyboard. Very small, portable, but not very convenient to play. Uh, so basically, if you have a keyboard, instrument, a big one, I mean the full size with dynamic keys and the, the, the keyboard that you like, and you decided to switch into producing using the computer, so you buy a DLW software, you have some nice synth instrument, and you just want to make some composition, you take your keyboard, connect it using the USB, and it works only as the MIDI controller. So actually it doesn't produce sound. In this scenario, we assume that all sound generator, so every sound that is generated in a DLW will be produced by the software. So we will be using VST plugins and built-in instruments, samples that are on our hard disk drive on computer. We, we only use keyboard as a MIDI controller. It will be one-way communication because we will be only receiving MIDI from the keyboard to the computer and no speakers of keyboard will be used. So in this scenario, you actually take the uh, volume on your keyboard and go to zero because you don't want to have any disturbing sound. All right, so you can find on my uh, channel a video when I'm taking the digital piano, the Kawaii, I'm connecting it to 
computer and play the synth sound. And this is actually the representation of this scenario. So please check the description, there is a video when I'm doing it. All right, so scenario number one, and now the connectivity, how to achieve it. All right, so this is how it looks. I have removed the things that are not necessary from this previous diagram. So basically, let's summarize. We don't use the speakers from the, oh, sorry, I need to move myself down, okay. All right, so we have removed the speakers. We have turned the volume down to zero. We don't want to use the speakers. We use the keyboard only and we are connecting through MIDI data. So we are using USB cable here between the instrument and the computer. We play some uh, notes here and it is recorded or played uh, in real time by the DLW software and the software synth. Of course, the signal goes through USB cable to USB interface, audio interface and to speakers. So this icon shows you which speaker we'll be playing in this scenario number one. Uh, when we want to use uh, this scenario, of course, uh, in this scenario, we lose a lot of great features from our keyboard. But if you have an old keyboard, and which is I, which have a nice keys, but uh, does not have nice instrument. You want something else, something better quality, and so on. So this is the good option. So you take the old keyboard instead of buying small keyboard or big MIDI keyboard because there is also a full size keyboard uh, on the market. But if you if you have in your garage the old uh, keyboard instrument which has a USB port or MIDI connectivity so you can use it and you don't need to buy another separate MIDI controller. So this scenario is for this reason. Okay, let's go forward. I think it's everything is understandable here and of course in on any stage if you have any questions just put me a comment to each scenario tell me which scenario you get some uh, you know questions and I will try to answer it. All right, scenario number two, keyboard instrument is a primary sound engine. This scenario was also discussed on my channel and there is a video when I'm taking the Yamaha keyboard connect to Cubase or FL Studio or maybe both and I'm using the USB MIDI. However, I'm not using any VST software to produce sounds. I only am based and I'm keeping focus on the built-in instrument that are in the keyboard itself. And what is the role of DLW software in such, you know, scenario? Basically, we achieve the greatest possibility for editing sound, layering tracks, and so on, and so on. If you, you, if you watch my video about Yamaha PSR S670, there is small screen, a lot of small buttons, and some stuff are very difficult to achieve. I mean, in manual way, you need to go to select channel, count bars. Some of you in the comments write me that this is very not convenient and let's make a video about the DLW software editing in such a way. And this scenario is actually for that usage. So you basically like the sounds from your keyboard, you like your playing on your keyboard, and the only lack of the, um, let's call it, usability in your keyboard is the editing of, you know, whole performance of the MIDI data manipulation. We add some tracks, multi-layering, and so on and so on. Some of keyboards are let's call it the educational keyboard, so they are not sold as a ranger, they are not sold as digital um, workstation, uh, so they doesn't have sequencer, step recording, um, multi-track recording, and so on and so on, but they have really nice sound quality or a sound on synth engine inside them. And in this scenario, we could take computer DLW software and play with this scenario. So, 
let's summarize all the you know assumption. We don't use software synth to generate sound. Yes, the keyboard will be used both as MIDI controller and receiver because we will send to DLW and if we hit play on DLW, the notes will be sent back to keyboard instrument to play the sound of the inside samples which are on the keyboard. It could be rompler sound on synth sound, doesn't matter. Basically the speakers of the keyboard will be used. And DNW software is be, will be used for fast and MIDI editing. Mouse, clicks, keyboard and nice to work with it. So quantizing, copy and paste and so on and so on. So this scenario actually extend the function of making arrangement, multi-track recording in your keyboard thanks to the external software DLW. But the sound engine, you know, the, the, the whole task, which is called who produced the sound. So to answer the question, the fundamental question, who produced the sound? The first question is the sound is produced still by the keyboard. All right, let's go forward. How this uh, scenario look like? It's very simple. It's the most simple scenario. So basically we get computer, we doesn't have any VST in here. Uh, still I need to move myself. Uh, the speaker is playing from the keyboard and we only use bidirectional MIDI data. So we play something here, it's recorded here. We manipulate some data in here and if we put our tracks together, we are hitting play and the play is not done by the computer. So the computer is silenced completely. It doesn't, you don't need to have a audio interface in this scenario, so it's a very good con. You don't need the audio interface or studio monitors. You're using the speakers from the, your keyboard itself, and it's playing back. All right, so the scenario number three, we are closing to the end. Um, again, I need to, sorry for this, I'm still learning the software. Okay, scenario number three, keyboard instrument is audio source. So in this scenario, we won't use MIDI itself, any MIDI. Uh, when this is, you know, interesting. Let's try to think about a scenario when you have all instrument, we doesn't have MIDI. We only have audio output like the Jupiter 8. I'm sure it doesn't have any MIDI connectivity. Uh, I don't know if MIDI was invented. Uh, I mean, it probably was, but using those uh, five DIN and the standard is pretty, pretty early stages of the then. So uh, connectivity with the computer, <laughs> probably it's not possible uh, without using some hardware in between. But let's, um, you know, in this scenario, actually, we, we treat the keyboard instrument like an analog instrument, like a guitar, classic guitar. We put mic and change those data and grabbing audio on the DLW. And this scenario is actually do, done uh, in this way. So we grabbing nice samples from the uh, instrument. It could be loops, drums, patterns. We could record it track by track. So we could have separate track and then using uh, to sync in the DLW, but actually in this scenario we were you know, we are not using MIDI, so there is no you know distinguish, there is no dissonance between who is producing sound, who is generating sound. Actually, the keyboard produces sound, and we are grabbing this into DLW, and DLW is only playing in the back because it has a copy, it has a record of the sound. So we grab audio samples, patterns, and the loop for keyboard instrument. We won't be using MIDI at all. The speakers of PC will be used. We don't need to mute the keyboard actually because if we are playing it in a recording stage, so we're playing for the first time to record on the LW, the speakers of both sides could play or not. But probably if we are playing, we want to hear what we are playing. So we turn the volume up of the keyboard. And in the W we got everything. We got another tracks from completely other instrument, external instrument, and then we are happy with our mix. So the last question who is recording and producing the whole files is of course the DLW software. Connectivity. In this connectivity, we want using 
uh, MIDI. So as you can see, there is no MIDI at all. We only have audio interface. It's crucial to have audio interface because we want to have nice conversion from analog output to digital way. And if you use the built-in sound card in your laptop, computer, PC, you probably get much more, much worse sample rates and the quality, overall quality of this is no. No, don't use the mic input, online input, only for, uh, I don't know, listening, for, you know, monitoring, but not for final recording. You always should use an audio interface. And please remember that some devices has built-in audio interface, like Zoom H4 and Pro Recorder has audio interface, Boss Loop Station, it has, has also has a... Uh, audio interface, so you not necessarily need to buy a separate audio interface. You could use some devices you have already. And there will be some videos, so please subscribe the channel not to miss. And let's summarize the connectivity. So, as I said, we are using analog output from the keyboard to the audio interface. It's like connecting guitar or everything else which is analog and we want to grab the audio sound. So we, our sound in DLW will be represented by not the piano roll, because piano roll is a MIDI data, yes, you know that. We only see the waveform like this one and through the USB cable it will be, you know, recorded in a digital way in a hard disk drive or our PC DLW software. Um, Actually, I leave the VST plugin uh, here. Uh, I mean, uh, if we are recording audio, of course, nothing audio, nothing here will be used in VST plugin. But for example, we want to grab a baseline DX7 legendary instrument baseline, but we want to add some nice synth and pads from VST. So in this uh, scenario, I think in most of the cases, we will be open to mixing from different so uh, instrument sources. So we probably mix the VST plugins with the keyboard itself. Okay, pros and cons of each solution. This video is quite long now, so I don't want to discuss all the pros and cons, but if you want to watch the next part of this video when I'm talking about pros and cons of each solution, please write a comment. I want to want I want to watch next part and give me a like, of course. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit a like, it's very important for YouTube algorithm to, you know, be found by other and so on. Uh, so, thanks for watching. You can contact me using this email if you like, or just write a comment if your question is, you know, worth to discuss with other, other audience. So don't hesitate to contact me at any time. So, the next video I'm planning, if you like this, of course, because there will be no interest, I won't be <laughs> continuing this topic, but if you found this video useful and you want to know why some people are using software synth, why they are not using, what are the pros and cons of the solution, because there is a lot of problems, by the way, some of them are really intriguing and annoying in some point. So, this is a huge topic about pros and cons of each of those solutions. So if you like this channel, please subscribe now and I'm ending. So see you later.